fluoroscopy or real-time projection x-ray imaging has been in clinical use since shortly after Roy Gen's discovery of x-rays. Early fluoroscopes consisted simply of an x-ray source and a fluorescent screen between which the patient was placed. Currently, uh, fluoroscopy systems fall into two distinct categories. First, image intensifier base, and second, flat panel detector base. In this lecture, we will focus on the image intensifier based fluoroscopy imaging system. Let's start. And this is the outline of this video lecture. Okay, now let's start by answering the question what is fluoroscopy or fluoroscopy systems? Fluoroscopy systems produce projection x ray images and allow real time x ray viewing of the patient with high temporal resolution. They are commonly used to position the imaging system for the recording of images that includes angiography and to provide imaging guidance for interventional procedure such as angioplasty. In the GIF file at the right, uh, we have barium uh, which is used uh, during a swallowing test to make certain areas of the body show up uh, more clearly on an x-ray. The radiologists will be able to see the size and shape of the pharynx and esophagus with this uh, method. Real-time imaging is usually considered to be about 30 frames per second. Digital fluoroscopy systems allowed the recording of a real-time sequence of digital images or digital video that can be played back as a movie loop with subsequent archiving in the patient's electronic file in the Picture Archiving and Communication System, or the PACS. A fluoroscope shown on the right is an X-ray machine designed for direct viewing of the X-ray image. Today's equipment is far more sophisticated. Most fluoroscopic units are properly called radiographic, fluoroscopic or RF units, because they can be used for both radiography and fluoroscopy. This is uh, convenient because most fluoroscopic examination also have a radiographic component. The first generation fluoroscope uses a receptor of a flat fluorescent screen as shown here, which is intercepted by the X-ray beam as it emerges from the patient's uh, body. Reason why we call this Fluoroscopy is because of the fluorescent screen receptor that converts the X-ray beam carrying the invisible image into a light image. Under normal operating conditions, the image had a relatively low brightness level. Shown here, again in the image, is a male technician taking a X-ray fluoroscope of a female patient. And the X-ray tube is behind the patient and a glass uh, screen with a fluorescent coating in front of the patient makes the image visible. Fluoroscope exams gave much higher radiation exposures than X-ray uh, film images. The first major development in fluoroscopy was the introduction of the image intensifier tube shown in this image. This tube produces a much brighter image than the fluorescent screen and its images can be viewed in a light uh, room. Then next development was the video system or the TV system to transfer the image from the image intensifier tube to a large screen as illustrated here. In the image, it consists of an image intensifier tube, an optical uh, image distribution system, and a closed circuit video system that contains a camera and monitor. A spot film or cine camera may also be included in the receptor system. Okay, now let's talk about the process that happens inside the intensifier tube. So this is the illustration, the figure here shows the events that produce electronic gain in an image intensifier tube. So the image intensifier tube body is just an evacuated bottle where the large area 
which refers to this one, the bottom of the bottle, is the input screen and the small area shown here or the cap of on the bottle is the output screen. So we have here the X-ray, incoming X-ray, we have the input phosphor converted to the light, then the photocathode. We also have here an electron optic system that accelerates and focuses the electrons emitted by the input layer onto the uh, output layer. And an output phosphor is also present here that converts the accelerated electrons into visible light image. When appropriate, an anti-scatter grid is mounted adjacent to the input layer on the housing. Let's talk about the input phosphor. The first layer is a vacuum window, which is a thin, typically about 1 mm aluminum window. Second layer, uh, we have the support layer, commonly about 0.5 mm of aluminum, and its curvature is designed for accurate electron focusing. Third layer, so after passing through the aluminum input uh, window and substrate, X-rays strike the input phosphor, whose function is mainly to absorb the X-rays uh, and convert their energy into visible light. Virtually all modern uh, image intensifier or IIs use cesium iodide or CSI for the input phosphor. The fourth layer, uh, which is the input screen, uh, is the photocathode, which is a thin layer of antimony and alkali metals that emits electrons when struck by visible light. Now let's go to the electron optics. The kinetic energy of each electron is dramatically increased by acceleration due to the voltage difference between the cathode and the anode resulting in an electronic gain. The intermediate electrons present here, so we have G1, G2, and G3, uh, shape the electric field focusing the electrons properly onto the output layer where the energetic electrons strike the output phosphor and cause visible light to be emitted. Next part of the image intensifier tube is the output phosphor. It is made of zinc cadmium sulfide uh, doped with silver and has a green emission spectrum, about 530 nanometers. It is very small, 1 to 2 micrometer, and the output phosphor is quite thin, uh, about 4 to 8 micrometer, to preserve high spatial resolution. So this is somehow similar to our discussion of the screen film system. The anode is very thin, about 0.2 micrometer coating of aluminum on the vacuum side of the output phosphor, which is electrically conductive to carry away the electrons once they deposit their kinetic energy into the output phosphor. Each electron causes the emission of approximately 1,000 light photons from the output phosphor. And this is due to the elect uh, electron gain uh, received by your electrons in the process inside this uh, electron optics. The image is much smaller at the output phosphor than it is at the input phosphor. The reduction in image diameter also leads to light intensity amplification. Uh, we have this so-called uh, minification gain of an image intensifier tube uh, is simply the ratio of the area of the input phosphor to that of, of the output phosphor. The ratio of areas is equal to the square of the ratio of the diameters. After discussing image intensifier tube system, we will now go to the video systems. It has uh, two fundamental components, mainly camera and the monitor. Illustrated at the right is a basic video system. It has an electronic tube that converts the image into an electrical signal or vice versa. The camera tube converts a light image into an electrical signal. Light-sensitive camera uh, screens of II such as an analog uh, Vidicon 
or solid state CCD or CMOS system used to relay output images to video monitor. Fluoroscopy systems generally use either Vidicon or Plumbicon tubes. Optical coupling can refer to accomplishing any connection uh, using light waves between two or more devices. Light emitted at the output phosphor of the II image intensifier focus by lenses used in fluoroscopic systems onto focal plane of the video camera. The amount of light that gets through is determined by the area of adjustable aperture on lenses. Inside the camera tube, we have this electron gun that shoots a small beam of electrons at the rear of the screen surface. The electron is sweep uh, over the surface of the input screen. It scans each location on the target, which refers to the amount of current that crosses the TV target and reaches the signal plate. And it depends actually on the resistance of the target at each location. The video signal in the system, or it's just actually the voltage versus time, uh, is transferred by wire to video monitor. Note that we have also here a synchronization pulses. So the video signal plus the synchronization pulses makes the a synchronized uh, raster scanning in the video camera and video monitor. The video signal uh, voltage modulates the beam current in the monitor, which in turn modulates the luminance at that location on the monitor. So this is called a raster scan pattern on on the target uh, and is replicated by the electron beam scanning the monitor phosphor. So a monitor here has a phosphor. Now let's talk about the optical system of the fluoroscopy. An optical system, as shown on the figure, transfers the image from the output screen of the image intensifier, as shown in the figure, uh, going to the input screen of the video camera or to the film in the spot or cine camera. We have the following components. First, a lens. We have a lens here. A lens is an element that transfers an image from one location to another. Its focal length expresses its focusing power and a major factor in determining the image size projected onto a film or the screen of the video camera. Second important component is the aperture. This determines the amount of light captured by the lens. This influences the efficiency of light transfer in an optical system and the exposure of film or the camera. F number that I stated here is a factor used to determine the efficiency of lens expressed as the ratio of the focal length of lens and the diameter of the lens. Third, uh, we have here the collimator lens. It's just a lens, which is the first component that will reach by the light from the image intensifier output phosphor. It is used to collect the light from the output screen and it will uh, be focused into parallel beam uh, for distribution to two or more devices. We have also here beam splitter, which is just a mirror that is partially reflective. It reflects light to one camera and passes through the light going to a second camera, as shown in the figure. After passing through the aperture, a second lens uh, is used to focus light onto a film or to the video camera to form the final image. Okay, summary. Uh, fluoroscopy allows real-time x-ray viewing of the patient with high temporal resolution. In the image intensifier, uh, we have this summary of steps. First, transferring energy from light to electrons, adding of electrical energy to the electrons through acceleration, and converting electron energy back to light at the output part of our II. Two fundamental components of a video system are the camera and the monitor. And we have also optical coupling system, 
uh, use here to connect devices using light waves. So that's it. Thank you. Hi, if you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GP Academia. See you in the next video.